Is there some interesting distinction between physics and math to you? H have you looked at physics much to like speaking of Richard Feynman? So uh, the difference between the physics community, the physics way of thinking, the physics intuition versus the computer science, the theoretical computer science, the mathematical sciences. Do you see that as a gap? Or are they strongly overlapping? I, it's quite different, in my opinion. I, um, I started as a physics major, and I switched into math. Uh, and pr probably the reason was that I could I could get A plus on the physics exam, but I but I, I never had any idea why I would have been able to come up with the problems that were on those exams. Uh, mm -hmm. But but in math, I I I, I knew. You know, you know why the teacher set those problems, and I thought of other problems that I could set too. Mm. And I believe it's it's quite a different mentality. Is uh, it, is, it has to do with your philosophy of geek geekdom? It, of it, geeks? No, it's it. I mean, some of my computer scientist friends are really good at physics, and others are not. And yeah. and I, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really good at algebra, but not at geometry. It, talk about different parts of mathematics you know it's, 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 it's so so they're different kinds of physical but physicists think of things in terms of waves and i can think of th of things in terms of waves but it's like a dog walking on hind legs if i'm thinking about it. so you, you basically you like to see the world in in uh, uh in discrete ways uh, and then yeah, physics I, is more I, continuous yeah I, I i'm not sure if Turing would have been a great physicist, I think it was a pretty good chemist. But, uh, but I don't know. But but uh, but anyway, I, I see things. I I I believe that computer science is largely driven by uh, a, a people who have a, a brains who are, who are good at resonating with certain kind of 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 concepts. And like quantum computers, it takes a different kind of brain. Yeah, so, that's interesting. Yeah, it's it's well, quantum computers is almost like at the intersection in terms of brain uh, between computer science and yeah. physics, because they it involves both at least at this at at this time. Um, but there is like the physicists I've known; they have incredibly powerful intuition, and and they're I mean statistical mechanics. So so I I study. Uh, statistical mechanics and, and mm -hmm. you know, I mean, random processes uh, are, are related to algorithms in a lot of in a lot of ways. And so, but there's lots of different flavors of flavors of physics as there are di different flavors of mathematics as well. Um, but but the, the thing is that I I don't see well. Actually, when they talk to physicists, they use a completely different language than when they're talking to. Uh, when they're writing expository papers. And so mm -hmm. I didn't understand quantum mechanics at all from reading about it in Scientific American. But but when I read, you know, how they described it to each other, talking about eigen, eigenvalues and, and various mathematical terms that that made sense, then it made sense to me. But, mm -hmm. but, but Hawking said that uh, every formula you put in a book, you lose half of your readers. And so he didn't put any formulas in his book. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't understand his book at all. <laughs> I, I, you could say you understood it, but it, I, really, I, I really didn't. Um, well, uh, Feynman also spoke in this way. So Feynman, I think, prided himself on really strong intuition, but at the same time, he was hiding all the the really good, the, the, the deep well, computation he, could, he was doing. So, so there was one thing that, that, uh, that I, I, I was never able to, uh, I, I wish I'd had more time to, to work out with him, but I guess I could describe it for you. There's, there, there's something that got my name attached to it <laughs> called Knuth arrow notation, mm -hmm. but, but it, it, it's a notation for very large numbers. And mm -hmm. so, uh, it, it, I find out that, that, Somebody invented it in in the eighteen thirties. Uh, it, it's fairly easy to uh, to understand anyway. So you start with x plus x plus x plus x n times, and and, and you can call that x n. Mm -hmm. So x n is multiplication. Then you take x times x t times x times x times n time. That mm -hmm. gives you exponentiation x to the nth power. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one arrow, x, 
So xn with no arrows is multiplication. X arrow n is x to the nth power. Okay? Yeah, so just to clarify for the... Uh, so x times x times x n times is obviously x n. And x, x, x plus x plus x n times. No, no, you know, oh, oh yeah, okay. And then uh, x n no and then multiplication is x to the n. Uh, and right. then so, and then here the arrow is when you're doing the same kind of repetitive operation for the ex so, exponential. So, so I so I put in one arrow and, and I get x to the nth power. Now I put in two arrows, and that makes takes x to the x to the x to the x to the x n times mm -hmm. power. So, so in other words, it, 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 if it's two uh, double arrow. Uh, three that would be that would be two to the two to the two, mm -hmm. so that would be two to the fourth power. That'd be mm -hmm. sixteen. Okay. Okay. So 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 that's the double arrow, mm -hmm. and now you can do a th triple arrow, uh, of course, uh, and and so on, mm -hmm. and and I I had this this paper called uh, well essentially big numbers, <laughs> uh, you, you know you. Yeah, you try to impress your friend, but by, by saying a number they've never thought of before. Yeah, and 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 I I gave a special name to, for it, uh, and designed a font for it that has script K and so on. But it but it really is ten, I think like ten quadruple arrow three or mm -hmm. something like that. And I claim that that number, if you, it is so mind boggling that you can't comprehend how large it is. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Feynman. I talked to Feynman about this, mm -hmm. and he said, "Oh, let's just let's just use double arrow, but instead of taking integers, let's consider complex numbers." Right? So, 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 mm -hmm. so, you know, you have I mean, okay, x x arrow arrow two. That means x to the x arrow, arrow x, x. But what about x x double arrow two two point? Five. Well, that's not too, too hard to f figure out. That's interpolate between those. But what? 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 X double arrow i or one plus i or some complex number, uh, and and uh, so he claimed that 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 the, there was no analytic function that would that would do that would do the job. Um, but I I, you know, I I didn't know how he could claim that that was in, that wasn't true. And his next question was, did then have a complex number of arrows? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. So so that's that that's Feynman. Uh, that's Feynman. Uh, yeah.